In this video, we'll explain SSH and FTP, what they mean, what they stand for, and generally how to use them with the programs that I suggested in the last video, as well as via the terminal. SSH stands for Secure Shell. The program that I recommended in the last video for that would be PuTTY. And what SSH does is it logs you into another computer. On UNLV's campus, we have a computer called Sally, and we want to be able to connect to it so that we can all run our programs and compile them there. That way we have a bit of consistency when we all compile on the same system and run it on the same system. In order to log into that, we'll be able to do that via SSH. There are other ways to do this, but SSH is probably the most common way to actually connect to a computer. So this will allow us to log in to Sally and be able to use any of the files that are there and run it as if we were just sitting on the UNLV campus at that computer. You're also able to go to the UNLV campus to access this computer as well. If you go into the TBE labs and sign in with your ACE account, it will basically do the same thing. It will allow you to connect to the computer without really having to do the whole SSH thing. But if you want to be able to do this from the comfort of your own home, or if you want to be able to do it from your own computer, then SSH is the way to go for that. Now, FTP does something similar. It stands for File Transfer Protocol, and the program I recommended for that is FileZilla. We'll be using specifically SFTP, which is a shell file transfer protocol, and they're not a whole lot different, but we'll be using that one to send things over here. It does something similar where it connects to the remote computer and then allows you to transfer files from your computer to that computer or vice versa as well so you can transfer programs back over. This is how we'll go about doing the source code compiling it on the remote server Sally is you'll be able to transfer it from your own computer over to Sally and then you'll be able to compile and run it on Sally rather than on your own machine and you should do that as far as your final testing goes. Now, the first program we have here is called PuTTY. When you first boot it up, it will start you on this session page. You'll see here that I have Sally already, but if we didn't have that, then we would need to type it in. So I could just hit load here and it would load it back for me, but we will type it in right now. You want to go to the host name or IP box and then type in either the domain or the IP that you want to connect to. So here, our domain is going to be called Sally cs.unlv.edu. There's also a bobby.cs.unlv.edu, but Sally is a little bit newer and we try to use that for this class. The port will want to be 22. 22 is the default port for SSH, so we'll just stick with that. And then here we have a connection type. You want to make sure that SSH is ticked. The other ones are also okay, but SSH, again, is the connection that we'll be using for now. Now, if you wanted to save this for later, you do have the option to just hit save here. But since we just typed in into the hostname box, we should be okay. We'll click open and you'll see that it opens a terminal and it will ask you to log in. So when you log in, this should be your username with the computer science department. So it should be basically the same as your ACE username. So for me, that would be black swan. I'll hit enter and then it will prompt me for my password. Now don't worry when you're typing in their password, it will not show up. So here it's just invisible. We can't see it at all. There's no stars, it's just gone. So if you're typing things in and you don't see anything, don't worry, it is capturing it. When you're done typing in your password, simply hit enter. And it'll take a moment and it will log you in if you have the right password. So now here we are, we're actually logged into the computer at school and we can do anything that we would be able to do physically sitting at that computer just from here in our terminal. So I could do things like ls or cd or any other command and it will work. Great, so that's how we can connect via SSH via PuTTY. Let's do an FTP with FileZilla and then we'll do both of these again using just the terminal. So FileZilla, whereas SSH connects to a computer and allows us to use it, FileZilla is an FTP, which means that it will transfer files to that computer. 
Now here you can see on the left hand side is my computer. I have all these files. What I need to do first is connect to the computer and then I'll be able to transfer the files. In order to connect, the way I usually do it is we go up here to File in the top left, Site Manager, and this will open a list of all the sites that you can connect to. You'll see I have Bobby here. Bobby and Sally both work the same for this, so I am going to just use Bobby. But if you wanted to, let's just say make Sally, we can do that for an example. I can click New Site. It will allow you to name it, so I'll name it Sally here on the left. And then again, we have the host name and the protocol and that sort of stuff. For the protocol, you can do either FTP or SFTP. So I will just go with SFTP. For the host, we'll type in the same host name that we did before. That is sally.cs.unlv.edu. And then the port we should be okay on. I think it will auto fill. Ah, we also need to specify a username. So this already logs in without having to prompt you. We will type in the username, which again for me was Black Swan, it'll be your ACE username, and then our password. I want to make sure I did not have to type in the port. So you shouldn't have to type in the port. SFTP or FTP should work. And we will hit connect. It'll take a moment to log in. And then you'll see here that I get the same directory that I just had in PuTTY. So we have these kinds of directories here. We have a CS682, a CS689, all these other CS courses. And we have the same thing over here. Now as far as actually transferring files, it is pretty simple with FileZilla, which is why I recommend using it. Let's just say we want to go to the CS135 directory. I can just double click on it like if I was using a normal file explorer on my own computer. And to transfer files over, all I have to do is drag and drop. For an example, I have a CPP file right here. It doesn't exist on the remote computer, but if I simply drag and drop it over here, you'll see that it will update it. So now if I scroll here, you'll see that there's an example .cpp, and it was updated today, which is June 1st. So it was sent over. Now, if you transfer a file that already exists over, it will give you this prompt that asks you if you want to overwrite it. You can do that if you want it to replace the file on the server. As far as transferring files back over from the server to your computer, it is also just drag and drop, so you can click on it and then drag it over. You can also edit these if you want and have it immediately reflect on the server. If you right click on it and then hit view or edit, and it will ask you if you want to open it with a different program, so you can open it with something like Notepad++ as well. It's a little bit faster if you do it that way, but dragging and dropping is totally okay too. Anyways, that's how we do SFTP and SSH with these GUI programs. We can also do it via the terminal. So here I've already opened a terminal. I'm on Windows. You do have to do something special on Windows. If you're on Mac or Linux, you already have Bash enabled on your computer. All you have to do is pull open a terminal and you'll be able to do this without doing anything extra. If you are on Windows, specifically Windows 10 is the only one that has it, I believe, you have to enable Bash Terminal as a feature in order to be able to do this. If you're on Windows, I highly recommend using Putty instead of doing this, but it is always an option if you want to be able to do it just from command prompt or PowerShell on Windows. Let's try to do SSH first. So to, in order to do that, all we have to do is type SSH. In general, when you type commands, it's the name of the command first, followed by some sort of argument that tells you what it is that you want to do. So I'll type in SSH, and then I can type in the domain, and it will go the same way that the other one did before. Now, another way to log in, specifically if you want to get the username out of the way without having to type it in later, is you can type your username before the domain and then the at symbol. So if I type in SSH blacks one at sally.cs.unlv.edu, it will log me into the sally.cs.unlv.edu account for blacks one that exists. So there's a user called blacks one on that computer, and it will try to log into that one specifically, which is maybe just a little bit easier for me to do in here. And again, it will prompt me for my password. It won't show up and we'll simply hit it. 
Now, if this is your first time connecting to the server, you may get a message both on PuTTY or via terminal that says something about, do you trust this computer or something about the key? And you want to hit yes if that happens. I've already connected to this server a bunch of times from both PuTTY and from the terminal, so it doesn't prompt me, but you might get something different when you do it from your computer. And again, we get the welcome screen on Sally, so I'm connected. I can again do commands as I see fit. If I want to exit and leave this, I can always type exit and it will just go back to my terminal on my computer and log out to whatever computer you were on beforehand. So I typed SSH beforehand. If I want to do SFTP, all I have to do is type SFTP and then again the domain. I'll type my username beforehand, blacks1, at sally.cs.unlv.edu. And again, it will prompt me for my password. We'll type that in. And you'll get something a little bit less flashy when you do SFTP versus SSH. It won't give you the welcome screen, but I am connected. You'll see now it says SFTP and then an error, arrow. I can now transfer files manually. It's a little bit more tedious to do this here with SFTP than it is with a GUI application like FileZilla. But for the sake of you knowing how to do it, I am going to, to do this. I again recommend use the GUI program, use FileZilla or something else in order to transfer files over. It's a lot easier, but for the time being, I'll explain this just so you have it for the future. Now, we have two actions that we can do. We can either send a file to the server or we can get a server file and send it to ourselves. I'll start off by moving a file from the server to my computer. Now, when you do SFTP, you won't necessarily have all the commands that you have access to when you do SSH, SSH because it doesn't give you access to all of those bash commands. And we'll explain bash commands in the next video. For the time being, I'm just going to do these assuming that you've used them before. If I type ls, it will show me all the directories. I'm going to go to my CS. 135 folder and try to connect some or try to get something out of that so if i go into that directory you'll see i have a file called example.cpp that we transferred over earlier so what i'll do is i'm going to copy that from the cs135 directory to my computer whenever you do commands it'll always be the source first so the file that is the original and then the destination second what i'll do then is the word get will transfer files from the remote computer to my computer so we want to do the the file that we're transferring first and then its destination second so the file here it was in the directory cs135 slash example.cpp and i want to put it here on my computer right now it will put it on my c drive in users and then my username you can also move around on the local directory using a different command, but for the time being, I'll just throw it at my C drive. So I will just type the name that I want it to be. I'll type it as example copy dot cpp. And you'll see that it fetches it from the remote computer and it puts it onto my computer. This whole time I've been using ls just to be able to see the files that are on the remote directory, but I can also look at the files that are on my computer as well. The way you do that is with lls, which just stands for local list, and it will list all of the files in your current directory. It's rather long because this is a Windows computer, but you should see that we have an example file somewhere in here called example copy.cpp. So we see that it did transfer over from the remote computer to my computer. What I'll do now for an example is just copy this file back over with a different name. So if put or sorry get was transferring from the remote computer to our computer, then put will transfer our file from our computer to the remote server. Again, we want the source and then the destination. So the source here is on our computer and the destination is the remote computer. So I will type put example copy.cpg, which is the file that now exists on my computer. And I will transfer it over to the other computer, which will be, let's just say example 
to .cpp. And it will transfer it there. Now if I type ls one more time, you will see that on the remote computer, we now have the example 2.cpp, so now it's on the school server. One last thing I think I'll recommend is if you want to transfer an entire directory over and not just a single file, you can do that pretty easily using the R flag. So here I'll get, we had a directory called CS135, which contained a bunch of programs, and it was a directory, so it, it's, you know, it contains a bunch of files. I can get the whole thing rather than having to transfer every file individually by doing slash r or uh, you know that r which this means recursive it will basically go in and recursively get all of the folders inside this one if you don't know what recursion is yet that's totally okay it basically just means that it keeps going inside of itself so this will get everything that's inside of the directory and then again, we start with the source. So the source here is CS135. The way you can do files is with star. That will get everything. I'm just going to do, uh, yeah, we'll do everything here. So we'll do star. And then if you don't want to put it anywhere specifically, so here I'm transferring a bunch of files. I don't necessarily need to give them a name. Then I can just leave it blank for the second part, and it will just automatically know, hey, we're talking about, this specific directory so if I hit enter here it will transfer all of files that are there and it's just gonna dump them on my C drive I'll need to delete them later I guess but if you want to get a bunch of files then that would be the easy way to do it anyways that is a brief overview of SFTP and SSH you'll need these a lot for this class in order to transfer your files over from your computer to the school server and then be able to run them again try to use the GUI if you can but the terminal is here as a reference if you ever feel like you need to use it for the future.